On February 26, 1997, the press gathered in a U.S. House of Representatives hearing room to report the introduction of H.R. 856, a Resources Committee bill to provide a process leading to full self-government for the 3.8 million U.S. citizens of Puerto Rico. The legislature of Puerto Rico has once again asked the Congress to take actions to resolve the Puerto Rico's political status. Two weeks ago, a bipartisan delegation from Puerto Rico personally delivered copies of the resolution asking the 105th Congress, and I quote, to respond to the democratic aspirations of the American citizens of Puerto Rico in order to obtain a process which will guarantee the prompt decolonization of Puerto Rico through a plebiscite sponsored by the federal government which shall be held no later than 1998. The people of Puerto Rico have contributed to the social and cultural heritage of our nation. They have fought bravely in our wars in which many have lost their lives. And they have shown the American people the true meaning of participatory democracy as more than 85 percent of the electorate has traditionally voted in their referenda and elections. Clearly, Puerto Rico needs the opportunity to freely express their wishes regarding the options for full self-government. Uh, this year, the problems that uh, were in the bill the last time, I think, have been uh, taken care of. I think uh, Chairman Young has done an outstanding job. There are three clearly defined uh, options for the people of Puerto Rico, statehood, uh, commonwealth, uh, independence. To me, that is the most important aspect of this bill. The fact that finally the United States Congress will have to let the people in Puerto Rico know how it truly feels about the future of this relationship. Where I am clear is that the present relationship is one that has never been defined as anything but territorial and perhaps colonial in status. That has to change. The bill continues a legislative process begun in the 104th Congress, offering Puerto Ricans congressionally defined options for a future political status. If passed, voters would choose among options in a plebiscite to be held in 1998, 100 years after the U.S. took possession of the island during the Spanish-American War. Since it was ceded to the United States by the Treaty of Paris in 1898, the island has been subject to congressional jurisdiction under the Territorial Clause of the U.S. Constitution. In the ensuing century, a close relationship with the United States developed, but permanent sovereignty and full self-government as a state of the U.S. or as an independent nation has yet to be achieved. In 1917, Puerto Ricans were offered U.S. citizenship by the Jones Act and all but a few welcomed it, declining the option of separate citizenship. Since then, Puerto Ricans may move freely within the 50 states and, once they establish residence, may vote in local, state, and federal elections. Those residing on the island enjoy no such privilege. In 1953, Congress authorized and the Puerto Rican electorate approved a form of local self-government known by the English term Commonwealth. Intended to be an interim step leading to an eventual permanent status that provided for a congressionally approved local constitution, island government based on the three-branch federal model, and exemption from U.S. federal taxes. Al fundarse el Estado Libre en voluntaria asociación de ciudadanía y de afecto con los Estados Unidos de América. Under Commonwealth, Islanders developed an active and intensely competitive political environment and began to govern themselves in most local matters. Puerto Rico, however, continued to be subject to U.S. law and the jurisdiction of the U.S. Congress. In the intervening 45 years, popular sentiment moved from overwhelming support of the Commonwealth arrangement to a desire for full self-government and equal rights for American citizens residing on the island. In a 1993 locally sponsored plebiscite, voters chose between independence, U.S. statehood, and an enhanced version of the present Commonwealth. Local political parties aligned with the various status options defined the terms. 
Although no formula won a majority, it was clear that the entire electorate wanted change. Subsequent to that plebiscite, the Puerto Rican legislature petitioned the U.S. Congress to respond to the voting results and to the status definitions offered by the political parties. Congress did so. H.R. 3024 of the 104th Congress and H.R. 856 of the present Congress became the process by which the U.S. House answered that petition. A companion bill has been introduced in the U.S. Senate, consistent in all significant respects to H.R. 856. The intent of the legislation is to allow Puerto Ricans to decide on a permanent sovereignty for their island in a plebiscite no later than December 31, 1998. Participation is limited to voters duly registered under Puerto Rican election law. The bill offers voters three choices, statehood, separate sovereignty, or current status, which continues the present Commonwealth arrangement. Each status option will be clearly defined, reflecting the will of the U.S. Congress. A majority of votes for any choice triggers a predetermined process. Since Commonwealth is not a permanent status, a majority vote for the status quo leads to a provision for another plebiscite in four years. This also occurs if no option wins a majority of votes cast, or if at any time in the process, Islanders fail to approve or ratify scheduled transition plans. A majority vote for either statehood or separate sovereignty leads to a transition plan drafted by the President of the United States and approved by the U.S. Congress. The electorate then votes on the transition plan for the winning option. If a majority approves it, then that option moves towards implementation in an orderly process. If statehood is the winning option, the island would join the Union on an equal basis with the other states. If separate sovereignty is the winning option, the island would become a separate nation, either fully independent or as a separate nation in association with the United States by treaty. After the transition period for the winning option is completed, Congress and the Puerto Rican electorate again vote to finally ratify implementation of the new status. If implementation is ratified by Congress and the voters, then the president inaugurates the permanent political status of Puerto Rico by proclamation. In the 105th Congress, the House Committee on Resources held public hearings on the bill. The first in Washington, with subsequent sessions in Puerto Rico, one in the capital city of San Juan, and the other in the principal eastern city of the island, Mayaguez. In the Washington hearing, the island's governor, Pedro Rosselló, and leaders of the three Puerto Rican political parties testified as to how each status option should be defined in the bill. We have to face the issue. Either we want to be Americans or we want to be Puerto Ricans. That's the real issue. Other issues brought before the committee related to the status of American citizenship should Puerto Rico choose independence, the status of the English language should Puerto Rico choose to become a state, the nature of the present Commonwealth and what could be done to enhance it, eligibility requirements for participation in the plebiscite, and the economic impact on the island of future political change. We have talked long enough in Puerto Rico about our political status. We have talked for a hundred years. It is time now to act and to find out how strong is the creed of equality, democratic values, and pluralism of our nation once the voice of the people of Puerto Rico is heard in the proposed 1998 plebiscite. In Puerto Rico, these issues found expression in the streets adjoining the hearing venues as local political parties organized demonstrations. Such manifestations illustrate the stake which island political structures have in any change in the status quo. The three parties define each issue according to its own status aspirations. The Popular Democratic Party, or PDP, is associated with the present Commonwealth status. It advocates an enhanced Commonwealth with autonomy from the U.S. Congress, immunity from selected federal law, guaranteed full rights of U.S. citizenship while enjoying federal benefits without paying federal income taxes. No 
the PIP, or Independence Party, urges separation of Puerto Rico from the United States and the creation of an independent sovereign nation. In its proposal, however, Puerto Ricans would enjoy continued U.S. benefits, dual citizenship with the United States, and or unrestricted immigration. The New Progressive Party, or NPP, envisions the island as a sovereign state of the United States with the same rights, privileges, and responsibilities of the several states of the Union. NPP Governor Pedro Rosselló, enjoying his party's rally, commented on the bill. The process is going at a very fast rate. Uh, it's only the uh, first uh, few weeks of the congressional session. We've already seen in the House that uh, over 80 sponsors uh, public hearings like this. In the Senate, a similar bill has been introduced. The President has established his commitment for allowing Puerto Rico to have the opportunity in 98 to celebrate a plebiscite or a referendum. So I think the process is going very fast. The appearance of former Governor Luis Ferre and incumbent Governor Pedro Rosselló on the same platform illustrates support for H.R. 856 among Puerto Ricans of different mainland political affiliations. The current governor identifies with the National Democratic Party, while former Governor Ferre is known as Mr. Republican on the island. Both support statehood for Puerto Rico. This is a point of critical mass. The Congress now is fully convinced that they have a responsibility to discharge it. And they're going to discharge it. It will take time. It will require arguments. It will require conviction. But they have the conviction deeply in their heart that they are under the obligation to give Puerto Rico something that gives us, U.S. citizens of the United States, the dignity that goes with state. Mrs. Zoraida Forniedas, a Republican National Committee woman, testified before the Young Committee. I am a very close friend of uh, Governor uh, Rosselló, who is a Democrat, and uh, uh, the Congressman Romero, who is also a Democrat. But we belong here to the same party, and so we are trying to get statehood for Puerto Rico. So I think this is a, a, a real cooperation between both parties. It's really time uh, that Puerto Rico should make that decision. The PMP is like a coalition of uh, different forces, mostly Republican, uh, but with a lot of Democrats. As a matter of fact, our governor is a Democrat, but he, his lieutenant governor he is a Republican. And I will say that 80% of his cabinet is Republican. But it's, it's a coalition of forces for self-determination and to achieve our political rights. The 1996 general elections in Puerto Rico became a contest between supporters and opponents of the United States Puerto Rico Political Status Act. In that election, every office, from the island's governorship to seats on local municipal councils, were contested for a four-year term of office. Over 80% of the island's electorate turned out to vote. Detractors of the bill made opposition to it a central election issue in its campaign for governor and resident commissioner. PDP candidate for governor Hector Luis Acevedo was a critic of the bill in an earlier hearing held on the island. His opponent, the NPP incumbent governor, Pedro Rosselló, was a supporter. Resident Commissioner Carlos Romero Barceló was criticized by his PDP opponent for his strong backing of the bill. PDP leaders said that voters should treat the election as a referendum on the young bill process and elect candidates who spoke in opposition to it. Supporters of the process had much to celebrate as the vote tally mounted. The NPP had won a decisive victory. Governor Rosselló and Resident Commissioner Romero Barceló were both re-elected by wide margins, and the NPP party won control of both houses of the legislature by a two-thirds majority. When the magnitude of their popular support became clear, young Bill supporters saw it as a mandate to continue to press for its support in the 105th Congress. The nation can no longer maintain a colony. It is the only nation in the world that has a colony of over one million inhabitants, and it's almost four million inhabitants. So I think it's to the benefit of the, for the image of the nation and in its uh, democratic 
pushed throughout the world, asking other countries to strengthen their democratic process, uh, to have Puerto Rico as a, as a colony, belies that purpose. So the uh, United States has to solve this problem together with us. As this report goes into release, the House Resources Committee is marking up H.R. 856 for passage by appropriate committees and the full body. Its chairman, Don Young, issued a statement anticipating passage of his bill. The voters, he said, will have the opportunity to make an informed choice in a legitimate act of self-determination. The bill creates a fair process, but does not impose a result on Congress or the people of Puerto Rico. In 1998, Puerto Rico will have existed as an unincorporated territory, many would say colony, of the United States for an entire century. Since 1917, its people have been citizens of a country in which they have had no equal voice or vote. By their patriotism and often their blood, they have earned the chance for the self-determination that H.R. 856 offers. This is the moment to resolve the island's political status in a manner consistent with the nation's values and democratic principles. The dignity and international reputation of both Puerto Rico and the United States are in the balance.